Greetings Smartsheet fans. I was recently speaking to a client about the various options that are available through Global Updates in Control Centre. Their use case was that they had a, a schedule of, um, of tasks that they were all um, based into a, a hierarchy on a sheet that they would be provisioning for each of their projects. But what they hadn't done is fully fleshed out that list and at some point in the future they knew they were going to want to add some consistent blocks of new tasks at various points within those projects. And if you look at the global updates options within Control Center, there's nothing that's uh, available to do that. So what I've done is I've built out something in Bridge that allows you not only to add new tasks in blocks into it, but to also retain any hierarchy you define at the beginning. It's a great solution, let's take a look. For this demonstration, I have two project plans set up that have essentially the same structure, SLS003 and MKT002. The important thing to note in here is the insert block here column where I've identified where I'm going to enter my blocks of tasks. Now in reality you're probably going to do something slightly different. You might identify it via some sort of unique row description or a work breakdown structure number uh, that's common to your sheets. Um, but this just serves the purpose of being able to decide where I want to put things and I've got three entries in MKT002 and I have two in SLS003. I'm going to set the workflow off and I'm going to talk you through the rest of the solution. Okay, the trigger is a manual one, so I'm just going to hit run. And I'll just hit refresh here, just to ensure that it will start running, which is great. In a separate sheet, I have a list of all the tasks that I want to enter in a, in a block. Um, so you can see just 1 to 10, um, and I also want them to come in with a 0% complete, so I've got that column in there too. And you'll notice that I've added a little bit of hierarchy in here just for a, a bit of interest to show that you can drive the hierarchy into your, into your sheet as well. The very first version of this that I developed, um, I just had a flat list of tasks 1 to 5, um, and one of the issues that I found was that um, when, when I uh, triggered this off, you've got your... your uh, row where you want to enter every task under and they come in one by one uh, but as they come in each one comes in directly under the um, the row with the tick and so eventually you end up with all your tasks in there but in reverse order which is why putting the hierarchy in is, uh, is a lot better. Now we already have an identification uh, or a notification even that is uh, telling us that we've uh, got some activity in here uh, so let's go and have a look and as you can see task one to four are already in here and the hierarchy is, is present as well. And we'll probably get a notification momentarily telling us that we can refresh again with task five joining us. So um, I might just, here we go, refresh that and task five's in there. And so you can see we've got several layers of hierarchy and then task five is um, indented out again. Um, we'll do this one more time. You'll see where task six is. So you can indent in and we can indent out. And the um, and you can see that that is the, um, the sort of the, the same structure that we've got here. One more time, let's have a look and see what task seven does. That should be indenting in again. So we'll refresh that here. So you can see that this is all working out very nicely. So now we're going to go into the, the bridge workflow. It, as I say, it triggers off a um, um, sort of a manual trigger. Uh, and then there's a sequence of, um, of child workflows that then run through uh, that takes us down to the bottom level uh, where we're going to have a look at the structure that decides how we drive that hierarchy within the workflow. The important thing to understand here is the difference between a parent and a sibling within how Smartsheet manages its hierarchy. If we look at one of the, um, the add row functions here, uh, you'll notice that within the advanced options there are various um, various things that you can select to de define the location uh, where a new row is going to end up. Now by default it will end up at the bottom of your sheet but you can force that and you can also force the row to go in at the top. But what we're more interested in here is the parent ID and the sibling ID um, options where you can then define which um, a row ID uh, for, for the parent or sibling of a particular row. But what are parents and what are siblings? Well, if we go back to the, um, the, the other task block sheet, I can talk you through that a little bit more. Now put simply, the parent is the row that any row that you're looking at is nested under. So task four has a parent and that parent is task three. Task three also has a parent and that parent is task two. Task two is at the, uh, the, the highest level of hierarchy. It has no parents, very sad. 
Task six, that also doesn't have any parents, but task seven and eight do, and they're both, uh, both children of task six. So anybody who's used Smartsheet before probably understands the parent-child relationship. That's fine. Siblings is slightly different. Now, what a sibling is, it's um, any row that's directly above another row within the same level of hierarchy. So for example, you can see that task eight has a sibling. Task eight sibling is number seven, but you'll notice that seven doesn't have a sibling of its own. That's because there isn't another row above it in the hierarchy at, this, at the same level. You then got up to its parent level, and so, so that, it, that doesn't count. So even though uh, task eight has a sibling, weirdly task seven doesn't have a sibling. Now if we look at task four, that doesn't have a sibling either because it you know, goes one up from it and you've got a parent. Uh, task three doesn't have a sibling either because directly above it is task two. Task two does have a sibling, which is task one, but task one doesn't have a sibling because there's nothing else above it. So that's the, um, that's the kind of the quirk of, of having a parent and a sibling. And one of the things that's, that's just important to recognize about siblings is if you define sibling, it will also define the level of hierarchy that that row goes into. So where we've got say task eight or task five that have both parents and siblings, it's better to define um, in bridge the, the sibling rather than the parent because that will, by, by definition, if it has a sibling, it will have the same parent that, that you intend it to as well. It's a little bit complicated, but I hope it makes sense. And that's just a little bit of a sort of an indication to how, how I've got the, uh, the hierarchy within this solution to drive itself. Let's go back to the sheets and take a look at how they're getting on. If we look first at the SLS003 time plan, we can see that both uh, blocks of tasks have come in fully formed and, um, and well structured, just as expected. If we go over to the other one and we hit refresh, we can see how far that's got. And the important thing to, to note here is that this works irrespective of where I am inserting them within the hierarchy. So actually I selected the very top level here and you can see that we're getting uh, getting the tasks coming in with the same structure, uh, but some of them are coming in at you know kind of level one, level level two, level three, um, and and it's all for, it's it's all getting structured in the same way with the same uh, parents, same siblings, um, but it doesn't really matter where they are um, within the overall hierarchy of the sheet as it stands. So it's a really powerful and consistent way of doing it, um, and it's very very flexible. Hopefully this solution gives you an indication of the sort of updates that you can make via Bridge that be, go beyond the global updates that are available through Control Center. It's pretty much limited to the availability of um, uh, Smartsheet API endpoints. Uh, so there is a real breadth to what you can do once you, once you start to understand how to structure your workflows within Bridge. As always, get in touch if you want to find out more. Uh, you can drop us a, a note in the comments if you've got ideas or challenges that you're trying to solve for, or you can get in contact by the, by the email form. And um, yeah, I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Thanks for watching.